Yes, so uh, hope all of you, you are doing quite okay. Uh, my name is uh, Lameke Ondieke Akasa. I come from Kenya and uh, I'm a specialist in uh, monitoring and evaluation with some bias in uh, statistics. I have a bachelor's in applied statistics with computing from uh, a university in Kenya called Masai Mala. I also have a master's uh, 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 in applied statistics from also a university in Kenya called Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Uh, I'm a certified monitoring and evaluation expert, having been certified by the body. That's the monitoring and evaluation uh, 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 board of Kenya. And uh, now um, uh, I have a certificate in monitoring and evaluation. I want to take you through uh, the topic called stakeholders management. Basically, what we this entails is we want to understand that uh, you have uh, you have a task at hand. You want to do monitoring and evaluation. For you to have an effective monitoring and evaluation, you have to involve uh, stakeholders. And today, I have the pleasure to present you how you can be able to engage stakeholders effectively for you to get meaningful results. Uh, we will cover the following content. We will have the introduction part where we have to understand who is a stakeholder. So that we define the context uh, of a stakeholder, how you identify these stakeholders in any monitoring and evaluation exercise. And th then we will have the key considerations you have to take into account when doing monitoring and evaluation. Then we will look at the tools to use in stakeholders engagement. Then we have a key part in stakeholders, which, which we call uh, stakeholder analysis. Then we ask for you to identify cases where you can be able to uh, identify the key stakeholders in that category. Then uh, that will be uh, uh, our presentation today. We have to thank uh, the sponsors, the African Institute for professional development who are the main funders for this program uh, through uh, statistics without the borders uh, organization. Now, what would be, what we will seek to uh, have at the end of this key goals and objective of this training are, you have to identify as the caller. At the end of this lesson, make it your priority, you understand who is a stakeholder. You also need to understand how do you engage stakeholder or stakeholders in that case. And lastly, how to perform stakeholder analysis. A stakeholder is, it can be an individual, a group or institution that has an interest in a particular resource. Now, what for you to define effectively a, a, a stakeholder, you look at the key competing interests that people have on a given uh, resource or on a given project, then anybody who has an interest, who has uh, uh, or an institution that has interest on a particular resource or project, we call it, we call him or uh, the, 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 the project to be a stakeholder. This call, a stakeholder can be a group or individuals who are directly or indirectly affected by the outcome of a project. And as well as this outcome influences their way of life. Look at a scenario where you are looking at a piping of water in Rwanda. Your key stakeholder in water piping is the users who are the consumers, the people who, whose land is affected by, uh, by, by, by piping. The government of Rwanda, which is doing the project, and if it's donors who are funding the project, the donors are also classified under stakeholders. What do we call stakeholder engagement? This is a, a systematic identification, analysis, 
planning and implementation of actions designed to influence stakeholders. We say we engage stakeholders in a systematic manner for you to identify, you analyze, plan and implement actions that are designed to influence uh, 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 stakeholders. It, it can be also looked at as a strategy that identify needs of key groups and sponsors that play a, a, a very important role in ensuring outcomes are met. Now, we have two classes of stakeholders. The stakeholders can either be primary stakeholders or secondary stakeholders. Primary stakeholders are those who are directly affected and are dependent on the resources, while secondary stakeholders are those who are more indirectly or less affected uh, uh, by the outcome. In this classification, you should note that it depends on the level of their influence, it depends on the resources and the level of effect, whether they have a positive or a negative effect on uh, these stakeholders. What is the rationale of stakeholder analysis? We do stakeholder analysis for uh, quite to identify who needs to participate, that's the primary and the secondary to assess how stakeholders uh, are affected or might affect the project, that's the positive or negative impact of the project. You identify, to identify the multiple interests and objective of stakeholder in, a, in relation to the particular project management, understand actual resources, influence or told all power that stakeholders can have on particular initiatives, to assess the most appropriate means for them to participate, also, we do stakeholder analysis to assess the capacity of stakeholders to participate in planning process. Also, lastly, we do stakeholder analysis to begin to understand potential conflict that could arise in implementation of the project. This, uh, this uh, stakeholder analysis uh, uh, rationale has been adopted from USAID, USAID uh, manual. How do you identify stakeholders? For you to identify stakeholders, you have to make key consideration. The key question you ask yourself for you to identify stakeholders, what is at stake? You have to ask yourself, when you are doing this project, what's at stake? Is it my land? Is it the service I'm receiving? Is it the people who are getting affected by uh, this project? Therefore, your key interest is what is at stake, that if you ask that question, you are able to identify stakeholders. And for you to identify what's at stake, it can be a product, maybe a good or a service, a good that is being consumed. It can be a service, and a service has to have the service and the service provider. It can be a consumer of a product. Look at maybe you are talking about water consumption in. Uh, Rwanda municipality, we have to look at the consume of this water. One thing that you have to take into consideration for you to identify what's at stake is stakeholders typically have competing stakes. The government wants water to be pumped. The people want to consume water. The land user want to be compensated for uh, laying pipes in their land. Meaning everybody here comes with com com competing interest. And that's very key for you. If you get it wrong in stakeholders engagement, the project is likely to get stopped. What are examples of stakeholders? In general examples of stakeholders is, it can be a government agency and the government agencies include parastatos and the ministries. It can be communities that are all indigenous people like when you want to destroy indigenous forests, uh, the indigenous guys could not be happy. It can be C4 society organizations, those human rights activists who are concerned about a given project, a given resource. It can be private sectors, and these private sectors, uh, 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 maybe they are funding or they, are, they have interest on the project. 
It can be deferment partners, and these deferment partners can be international uh, deferment partners or international deferment partners. It can be academia, uh, universities, schools, hospital, uh, uh, and research centers. It can be media. Media has really done very well in uh, stakeholder engagement, which can be both electronic and print. Or any person, any beneficiary of these goods and services, the life for implementation of the plan can be a stakeholder. What are the key considerations for you to engagement? For you to engage the government, one of the key things that you have to take into consideration is there are different agencies in government that perform different sectors. One key thing that you have to do is define a government uh, because defining government is one is, is not easy. You need to identify sections or parts of the government and the government oversights that are being affected by the project. To engage government effectively, you have to be transparent, you have to be determined, you have to adopt into required uh, adopting uh, specific outcomes. Also, you have to align your groundworks with government priorities. And lastly, you have to inform the government. You cannot do a project in Rwanda. I, I'm from Kenya, I come to Rwanda and I do a project, which of course, without consulting the local government of Rwanda, that will contravene, even they would sanction my project from going ahead. Another, another, another thing that we, we have to look at is, uh, when, what do you look at when you have to engage a community? You, for you to engage community effectively, one, you have to be dependent. You have to respect their culture. You respect their landscape. You have to get the job well done. You have to avoid burnouts. You cannot call people for five days for a meeting. They get exhausted and they will not be able to participate effectively. Now, maybe uh, you have it's this class is so appalling. I would want to request you, you look around your community, identify a project that has been funded by the government or end donor funding. And you maybe you take yourself as a, an M and E expert who has been identified to, to formulate a stakeholder analysis framework. Now, what I want to ask you at your whole time is, Look at the project near you, which has been funded maybe by national government, local government, or international funders. And from this project, identify key stakeholders who are involved. You classify these stakeholders as either primary stakeholders, those are which are who are directly affected, or secondary stakeholders, those who are indirectly affected. Then come up with what influences, what influence do those uh, stakeholders have? Now, having listed the stakeholders, can you be able to see what are their competing interests in this project? Out of that, I know if you are able to answer those questions, now you are an M&A expert, and I can call you, you are a stakeholder analysis expert. Now, lastly, I want to sum up by saying what are the best ways to engage stakeholders. Uh, I will lead all over them because they are straightforward and you will be able to get this right so that you can uh, ponder along with it. For you to engage stakeholders effectively, the best way to do it is you have to map stakeholders across your area of interest. Also understand who is in the form, how they are informed, and what they bring to the space. Include associate events where the meditation is open, discussion and the sharing of lessons in a relaxed setting. It can be an hotel as sort where everybody is just relaxed. Conduct a series of meetings where information, discussion, and round table. You have to start from informal meetings for you to formalize the meetings, meaning you must conduct a series of meetings. Also conduct stakeholders workshop. This stakeholder was, 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 workshop will, be, as, will assist you to identify 
the con uh, con uh, conflicting interest between different stakeholders. What are the benefits of engaging stakeholders? Number one, it offers those who will affect or, or be affected by outcome a chance to voice their opinions. Number two, it ensures that an, uh, a, a, project, a project team has greater clarity and the shared vision amongst its key influencers. Also, it enables the project team to identify who their key stakeholders are and understand the relationship they have with the project. Number four, it brings people together to pool knowledge, experience, and expertise to co-create solutions. Lastly, it helps build collaborative partnership and new lessons that generate value. Now, how do you keep your stakeholders engaged? Number one, stay focused, be consistent with your messaging, don't speak different thing today. Tomorrow you are on another tune. Be consistent. Let your communication be. We are implementing the water project in Kigali municipality. Number two, meet up with stakeholders who are resistant to change. This is where you have to confuse civil society to buy your idea for you to make the project work. Also, use data management system to summarize key information. Don't be go there with ordinary full scraps. Go there with uh, materials that can be able to collect enough data for you to understand the conflicting interests between different stakeholders. Create various options to resolve the issue and then ask the stakeholders to add their input to create an informed decision about the next step, meaning if you have a conflicting uh, interest, make sure you it's resolved among the parties involved for you to move forward. Uh, in an accent, uh, um, I, I, I was I'm happy to present to you what the summary of what we have planned. We have discussed who is a stakeholder, that person who has an interest in a given project and is either directly or indirectly affected by the outcome of this project. We have identified stakeholders for the project and I want to bring you to attention that in any case for you to, be, to do effective stakeholder analysis, identification of stakeholders, exhaustively list them down. Uh, so that you know what interest each stakeholder brings to the table. Second, we are able to map to stakeholders. And lastly, we looked on how you engage stakeholders effectively for you to get meaningful results. I wish you well as you continue with uh, other, other, other lessons. Uh, we will meet again in another forum. Wish you well in your understanding of stakeholder analysis. Thank you, welcome.